you know that by the end of their career, the average contractor will have spent 420 days wrapping extension cords? How about the fact that 69% of Americans don't know how to properly wrap or coil an extension cord, which means the majority of cords in American homes look like this. Or that the average builder spends on average 20 hours a year looking for outlets when there are none. And don't even get me started on looking for a place to keep all these guys or they're not gonna get tangled up. And is there anything worse than that feeling on your hands after you finally finish wrapping an extension cord and you look down and realize that everything on the floor that this thing was rolling around in is now on your fingertips. Mm. In a world where it seems like everything's going wireless, Wi-Fi, smartphone, Bluetooth, including my drill and driver, how can we cut that final cord and really set ourselves free? Because there are some tools it seems like will never escape their cords. And who could forget all the fun we have running extension cords to the far flung corners of our yard to charge the dead battery on a school bus. Now look, I'm not coming at you with an indictment against extension cords. They're a necessary evil in any shop. But I do wanna share with you this week a new tool that's really been changing the game up around here. And that is the Anchor Powerhouse 767. Yes, this is my first sponsored content on the channel and I couldn't be more excited to be working with Anchor because this is a product that I actually believe in and I think it could be helpful to a lot of you out there the same way it's been helpful to me. And in this week's episode, I'm gonna be talking about all of the reasons why I chose to work with Anchor, I chose to represent this product, and why I think it's the best version of a powerhouse power station out there that you can get. Don't go anywhere, I know you want to, but this is gonna be something you don't wanna miss. My name's Chuck Cassidy, thanks for tuning in. Let's go to the powerhouse. Now look, I've been designing off-grid solar electric systems since before the Kardashians had their own line of makeup, but I'm probably one of the last people to get on the all-in-one solar generator power station bandwagon, and that's because I've been historically really disappointed by the performance of the available things out there, especially when you consider the high asking price for a lot of these units. About a year ago, a friend of mine gifted me one of their orange and gray models. And I thought it would be fun to see if I could come up with some creative ways to use that around the shop, see if it would make my life easier. And it was useful for a few things. It was good for emergency backup power and I could charge my phone off of that. But for a lot of the uses that would really bring a lot of value to my life, some of these earlier and smaller and less technologically advanced offerings from other brands just weren't going to deliver for me. You know, I was disappointed by the slow recharge time from these units. I was disappointed by the low power output. And the last thing is the battery chemistry used by a lot of these was the lithium ion type of battery chemistry. And that's a battery chemistry that I regard as so dangerous with such a short cycle life that we actually don't install them in our buses. I actually took a battery pack out of a bus that we had built and replaced it with a lithium iron phosphate battery, like the kind found in these anchor units, because I believe in this chemistry so much more. It doesn't have the cobalt in it or the nickel, which are two very difficult metals to mine, and the mining of them is extremely problematic for a lot of social and environmental reasons. And when you can combine that with the fact that the cycle life of lithium iron phosphate is over 10 times that of lithium ion technology and it doesn't have the thermal runaway issues that you get, you know, fires and so forth and so on that you would find in the lithium ion technology. For me, it's not a question, it's a no brainer. Lithium iron phosphate is the battery chemistry you want. And it blows my mind that today there are still companies using lithium ion batteries. Like, come on people, get with the game. If you're gonna be spending all this money, I want something I can use so many times and get so much use out of, I'm not thinking twice about whether or not I should throw it in the truck with me on my way to the job site. Another reason why I'm excited to work with Anchor and why I chose Anchor over other brands is that they are an established worldwide leader in charging technology. And I'm not saying that just to blow smoke. 
these are a big investment, you know. We're talking about spending over $1,000 on this piece of hardware. And I want something that's coming from a reputable company that I know is making a safe product and will stand behind their product with the longest warranty available from any of the other brands standard. It's a five-year warranty. It has a lithium iron phosphate technology. You combine that with the fact that it's got a 30 amp plug on the front. It's got the fastest solar recharge time and just about the fastest plug into the wall recharge time. And that makes this my weapon of choice. And I am excited to work with Anchor. I'm happy to be working with Anchor. And the support they're giving this channel is gonna let me have a lot of fun showing you not only about this product, but also all the other cool things that we'll be doing in the shop along the way. So thank you to Anchor for being a part of the community, letting me share my story about what it's taken for me to actually get on board the all-in-one solar power center bandwagon. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you some of the cool things it can do that will make your life easier, that can help you as you build your conversion. And you might even find this as a suitable drop-in replacement for some of the off-grid electrical systems you would otherwise buy from someone like me. Speaking of off-grid energy systems, I wanted to take a moment and compare how the Anchor Powerhouse 767 would stack up against the closest thing that I can build approximating it using components from another reputable company. What we're gonna also do is throw in a comparison to a generator from a well-known reputable brand and see how all three of those options stack up so that you can understand what's gonna be the best fit for you and why I think these all-in-one units are finally at a level where they can compete with even the best systems put out there and gas generators. You know, I believe in keeping things as fair as possible. And so when I was going to set up this comparison, I went ahead and selected the components that I'm used to installing from Victron that would as close as possible match everything inside this Anchor Powerhouse 767, starting with the battery. This battery I've selected here is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It has 160 amp hours at 12.8 volts, which matches exactly the same energy density of the Anchor Powerhouse 767 at 2.048 kilowatt hours of storage. The next thing I spec is the inverter section. The Anchor Powerhouse has a maximum output of 2,400 watts. And to match that, I had to select a Victron MultiPlus 3000. Now the 3000 is a bit of a misnomer because it's not 3000 watts, it's 3000 volt amps that it is rated to output. And because of a thing called power factor, the maximum rate output of this is actually 2400 watts. So they're evenly matched there. For charging the batteries from an AC source, the charging section of this is good for 30 amps at 24 volts. And that brings us up to 1680 watts. So that's very close to the 1440 watts offered by the Anchor Powerhouse. For the solar charging, I've got that paired with a smart solar charger. You actually would need one that's even bigger than this, but I didn't have one laying around. This is a smart solar 60, okay? for 60 amps, and really to match the 1,000 watts that this can take in, we would need something closer to an 80 amp or an 85 amp charge controller. Of course, we gotta have our DC to DC charger to keep up with this, and then all of the monitoring that's required to keep up with that. Now, this screen doesn't display the same amount of detail as the one on the anchor, but it's as close as I could get without going to the next level up. And then of course, we've gotta have our main DC bus, some fuses, and an on off switch. And all of this you need in addition to some way of getting the power out. So I've got a fuse block here, but keep in mind, if you really wanted to use this system, you need to wire up some AC outlets, probably some DC outlets, some USB charging ports, and you'd need to get a shore power hookup or some other way to get the AC power in the box. So we've got a really big spread of equipment here to replicate everything that's happening in this one unit here. Now I know what you're thinking, all that info was a lot to handle, Chuck. Can you break it down for me? And the answer is yes. So here we have the three options I wanna be comparing. We've got our Powerhouse 767. We've got our component-based system. That's the Victron setup I just showed you. And then we'll be comparing it to a gen set. And for that, I've picked out the Honda 2200i. And you've probably seen those. They're the little briefcase style generators. That was the one I could find that most reasonably matched the output of these two without stepping up to something a lot bigger. All right, let's get down to the brass tacks. So the inverter section, the AC output, 
2400 watts here at the powerhouse, 2400 watts with our component based setup, and then we've got 2200 watts on the gen set. It's important to note with the gen set that that 2200 watts, it's actually rated to 1800 watts continuous, so it's a little less. And again, I could have gone with a bigger gen set here, but then that would have been a whole nother league that I didn't think would make it a fair comparison for things like weight and price. The next thing we've got coming up is the solar charging capabilities, so the, the, the input of the solar charging. So with the Powerhouse 767, you have 1,000 watts. The component-based system, if you go to a 100 amp charge controller, that'll get you around 1,200 watts. The Gen Set, of course, doesn't have any of this charging section to worry about. We've got our AC charging at 1,440 watts, and our component-based system has AC charging at 1,680 watts. So really evenly matched there. They can both recharge uh, to full in you know, a very short amount of time. The DC charging section, so this is if you're going to be charging off of your vehicle. In the component-based system, I expect the biggest option available from Victron, and that is good for 360 watts of charging off your vehicle. Uh, the Powerhouse 767, if you plug it into your car lighter, that will be the limit there at 120 watts, which is the same limit you would have, by the way, in the component-based system. It could just handle more input. Now, the Powerhouse 767, I believe, could actually handle up to 1,000 watts because it uses the same input as the solar charging for the DC to DC charging. That's something that I'm going to be talking with them and asking about because if that's the case, then this actually beats the component-based system, but we'll have to find that out. Uh, the runtime here on a full charge, I've got uh, you know the 2.048 watt hours, and that's going to be the same here. For the gen set, what I did here is I actually took the runtime on a full tank of fuel and multiplied it by this 1800 watts here, and that's getting us uh, 5.76 uh, kilowatt hours, so roughly a little more than double um, what you would get from these two, you know, if you're leaving with like a, a full charge, I suppose, and a fuel tank of fuel. And then this is the weight. Now, this of course doesn't include the weight of fuel, which is going to be about another 20 pounds. So our Powerhouse 767, it comes in at 67 pounds. And our component-based system, <clears throat> best case scenario, is gonna come in at about 85 pounds. Um, now, there are some battery options I'll get into in a second that would actually increase the weight a little bit if you go with a more affordable battery. And the gen set, again, 46.5 pounds, but if you have it fully fueled up with three gallons of gas, it's going to add about another 20 pounds, and that brings it to almost in a dead heat with the Powerhouse 767. Let's go down and get into the price here. Now, these prices here do not include solar panels because that's a, a tremendous variable that's going to be different for everybody. Um, and it's really just the retail price that you can expect to pay for these units. The Powerhouse 767 right now is $21.99. The component-based system, if you go with a non-Victron battery, so different than the one I had there, one that's going to be quite a bit cheaper, frankly, with a little bit more capacity, but it will weigh more, the cheapest you can get that setup going is for $2,759. If you use that Victron battery that I had there, which is the most compact, lightest weight, and maintains the five-year warranty, which is what we're trying to do here, um, you're looking at almost $3,800 to get that setup going. The Gen Set, of course, and it's no surprise, is gonna be the cheapest at $1,199. So quite the spread here. And the component-based system, keep in mind, there are some things in there that aren't included, like you have outlets, the USB outlets. It's not in any type of enclosure. There's no wheels or anything like that. And if you want to maintain that five-year warranty, like the Powerhouse 767 has, you need to stick with a Victron battery. And the Victron battery means you're going to be on the more expensive end here. Now, I know there are a lot of different options for lithium iron phosphate batteries available. So that's why I included this because, again, I'm trying to keep this realistic and a fair comparison. I'm not, I'm not trying to set up any straw men here, okay? I went to school for philosophy. Um, now, these are kind of the more uh, objective, I would say, stats. Down below, I think, is some really interesting stuff to talk about that um, helps paint the picture. So the noise, right? Well, the Powerhouse 767 and a component-based system are both essentially silent. The Gen Set, that Honda unit, you know, it is one of the quietest, if not the quietest, 
gen set of that size on the market. It's only 59.1 decibels, which is really good. That is about the level of a typical conversation, but it is still a lot more than you would get from either of these two options. Um, let's talk about the app and connectivity. The Powerhouse 767 has the ability to monitor what's going on and it control it. So you can turn it on and off. You can turn the light on and off. You can do all of that from Bluetooth within the app. Um, that's really actually a lot handier than you might expect. The component-based system, as it sits, it, you have the ability to monitor what's going on through Bluetooth, and you can control the charge controller, but there's really no reason to control the charge controller. Controlling the light and the load outputs and things like that is much more practical for day-to-day -day use, and that is not present on the component-based system. And the gen set, of course, it has none of that. If you want to turn it on, you have to go start it up, and if you want to turn it off, you've got to go out there and turn it off and vice versa. So there's nothing there. Let's talk about the form factor. So the powerhouse is obviously fully assembled with rollers and a handle and it's easy to move around. The component-based system, well, you've got to make a box for it or some type of enclosure if you want to build some wheels. I mean, we're not even counting that, which is not fair to the powerhouse, but you know, there's some creative people out there or maybe you're considering the powerhouse instead of putting this in your van or RV. So we're not gonna go too in depth there, but just know it is DIY. And the gen set of course is roughly the same size as the powerhouse and it does have a handle, but it doesn't have rollers, which is kind of dumb. I Like why not put rollers on there? The thing fully loaded is gonna weigh, you know, almost 70 pounds, just like the powerhouse. Anchor put rollers on it. Um, now the powerhouse, it's got USB and 12 volt outlets in addition to a 30 amp plug, which none of these have, and the usual 120 volt receptacles. The component system doesn't come with any of that. So if you want outlets, you're gonna need to buy them and figure out a place to mount them. Same for USB ports. Um, I did you know, spec in a, uh, a fuse block, but you know, that's only good if you're hardwiring stuff. And the gen set, of course, it does have the 120 volt outlets and it does have a 12 volt output option, which is handy, but it's not a USB or anything like that. The Powerhouse 767 comes with a five-year warranty, just like all of the Victron components in our component-based system. However, if you can't afford that expensive battery and have to go with a cheaper one, a lot of those batteries have a much shorter warranty. We're talking two to three years, and they're companies that, quite frankly, might not exist in two or three years. So to keep it apples to apples, you really have to spend the extra money here. And the Honda Gen Set, it's only got a three-year warranty. So. This obviously is gonna win on the warranty segment as well. And the last thing I wanna to touch on is a lot of people, they get antsy being like, this is an all-in-one, what if something breaks on this, you know? Well, if something on this breaks, you have a warranty, and it's gonna be really easy to swap and replace. The whole unit, it's not a big deal. And I doubt that the whole thing would go down. You would probably still only lose one section of it if it were to break. On the component-based system, if one thing breaks, it's still a huge bummer. If your inverter goes out, well, there goes your AC power. If the charge controller goes out, there goes your, your charging power. I mean, I don't buy that redundancy argument personally. I think it's a bummer if any part of your system goes out. And if any part of your system goes out, you want it to be easy to replace and swap. And nothing's easier than swapping the whole shebang, especially when it's just one item with like three things that plug into it. Now, Gen Set, of course, is a much more complicated thing because it's a machine. Um, you've got carburetor you've got the starter mechanism, you need to have oil in there and a spark plug and an ignition system. So from a reliability standpoint, I think it's too different to really compare the two. I just know that the powerhouse, there's no scheduled maintenance on it. And with the gen set, there certainly is. And this will vary depending on how you use it. The powerhouse, frankly, it doesn't really care how you use it. Well, I hope I didn't get too technical with you, but the devil's in the details, and I really think that those details are what justify the case for using this, especially if you're going to be using a generator daily for an hour or two at a time, or if you're considering building a small component-based system for your van or RV. The cool thing about this versus the component system, among many others, is that when you're not using your van or your RV, you can take this thing out and keep on living with it. You can take it to the beach, you can take it to the job site, why buy two solar systems when you can, that you can only use one at a time, right? <laughs> Why buy two solar systems when one will do the trick? It's gonna be easier, it's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna be lighter, and it's gonna have the same type of warranty you'd expect from a high-end component-based system. Wow. Well, long story short, I never thought I'd be saying it, but these types of all-in-one power centers have finally hit the maturity I was hoping for to deliver the performance I need at a price that 
honestly feels reasonable. And I couldn't be more excited to be sharing the Powerhouse 767 from Anchor with you and to be announcing my partnership with them as a brand ambassador because not only do they have a product I can get behind, but they have a reputation for quality and they'll be there to provide the product support that we all want, especially if we're dropping a lot of our hard-earned money on a tool that we're expecting to serve us for a long time. If you have any questions about this product or about Anchor or anything like that, put it in the comments section because in the coming videos, I'm actually going to be speaking with one of their product designers and I wanna get the inside scoop on this technology so I can share it with you and we can find out together if this really is the best power center out there or maybe if it's got some shortcomings, I don't know. We're gonna figure it out and I'm looking forward to testing it. They gave me full license to put this thing through the ringer and we're gonna do just that because if it doesn't measure up, well, we gotta know about it. My name's Chuck Cassie. Thanks for tuning in and we're gonna see you here next week.